going to bring in uh, now into our stream, Anthony Scaramucci, the managing partner and founder of Skybridge Capital. And Anthony, of course, we're going to talk about Bitcoin in just a bit. But if you don't mind, while we have you, would like to get your reaction to the stimulus package, the $900 billion package here. Of course, there's a lot in there that we still don't know about, but it's taken, as Rick pointed out, several months to get here. Your thoughts? Well, first of all, thanks for having me on. But, but when I came on in March and you and I were talking about the stimulus and Adam and I were talking and I wrote a piece that we needed a $3.2 trillion stimulus. And if you look at the piecemeal packages, it still does not add up to that. And so unfortunately, it just isn't enough. And you know, we can talk about the $600 going directly to uh, each taxpayer. Obviously, that should be way more and less of that pork should be in the bill. Uh, but Julia, you know the, the 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 problem right now is we're at war. Just imagine if three hundred thousand people died in a homeland invasion. So a sovereign army invaded the homeland of the United States, murdered three hundred thousand plus of our fellow citizens, wounded one to two thousand a day, and one hundred and fifty thousand were injured by this army. Uh, imagine the response from the government, the state, and local government. And so for me. Uh, we're just not doing enough. I understand the issues related to deficit spending, uh, but we can solve those issues later on like we did after World War II. And so it's not enough. Well, we need more. As vice president and now president-elect Joe Biden is saying, it's a down payment. I'm glad it happened. Let's get that money in the hands of people as quickly as possible. But uh, we've got a lot of problems ahead uh, for a good portion of the American population. I'm glad you are here for two segments because there's a great deal to talk with you. And before we dive deeper into what needs to be done to get everybody back on the road to recovery in so many ways, are you breathing a sigh of relief now that the election is in the rearview mirror? Or are you concerned about what we see with some Republicans meeting with the administration, plotting a coup, perhaps, that's the word some people use, to not accept the election results? And we want to have a discussion about stimulus and government spending. But how do you do that when there are more than 100 members of the House of Representatives and some senators who are saying, we don't accept the will of the people? Well, you know, look, it's, it's, it's absolutely disgraceful. If you, if you read the book, How Democracies Die, uh, which is a book about interwar Germany and the descent and decline and game over of the Weimar Republic and the rise of Nazism, a lot of the elements are there. A lot of that facts basis is there. Uh, Adam, the, the problem with the Republicans, they could not stand up to Donald Trump. They despise him privately. You're a journalist. You know, a lot of these guys say things uh, about how despicable Donald Trump is behind his back. They won't talk about him and how despicable he is, like I will, on national television, Yahoo News, and, and et cetera. And so what all he's doing right now, he knows he's lost. He knows it's game over. He's pushed senior military leadership very hard on this coup. Uh, they've rejected it. Uh, he's gone to junior military people. Uh, I don't think he's going to get anywhere there. Uh, it's disgusting. And the fact that he's got all of these willing accomplices is disgusting. But listen, we're no better than uh, the ancients. We're no better than historical analogies to this moment in time. And we have a despot, a demagogue in our midst that wants to wreak destruction on the American experiment and the American democracy. And so uh, thank God we beat him. Uh, as I predicted would happen on Yahoo News. Uh, but listen, he's doing this right now to raise money. He knows it's over. Uh, he'll likely attend the inauguration. I can't see him resisting the temptation of all of that attention because he's an attention whore. Uh, so he'll be at the inauguration. Uh, and he's raising money. He's got bills to pay, legal bills to pay, criminal investigations ahead of him on a whole host of things. And he's sitting there scratching his head in amazement that he, he found $250 million coming from rubes and people he could con after he resoundingly lost that election. And so there was no fraud in that election. Ask William Barr. Uh, there was no internet fraud or cybersecurity fraud. Ask Chris Krebs. And so we're here now. There's an absolutely disgusting thing that's going on. And the Republicans have lost their way. They've, be, they've been captured by a demagogue. And we should point out, um, you know, you were speaking out 
when it did you no good, uh, so to speak. There was nothing in it for you to gain other is than it your doing me any good now? Two years I, mean, ago. I don't really know if it's doing me any good now, Adam. <laughs> well, you just called the president. Well, I, I, and I the went hard at him in August of 2019 when he was at his highest poll numbers. Uh, I came on your show and I said, the guy's nuts. Yep. He's going to have a nervous breakdown. It's like Trump noble. He's melting down. The Republicans will have to make a decision to clean him up or cover it up. Uh, and they decided that they were going to cover it up and they were going to line up against, uh, line up alongside of them as opposed to against them. Where I'm going with all this is we had Ted Cruz, senator from Texas, voted against the relief bill, says it's a waste of money. How does the Biden administration go forward and, and forge some kind of what we, you know, those of us who are kids in the 80s, young adults in the 90s, remember as compromise? How do you get back to that or is that never coming back? Well, I think it's about leadership. You know, I, I, it's ultimately going to be up to uh, President-elect Biden and uh, Majority Leader McConnell. Uh, of course, he could lose in Atlanta, but I'm predicting that he won't. I'm sorry, in Georgia, but I'm predicting he won't. Uh, and it'll be up to the two of them. They have a longstanding relationship. Uh, Senator McConnell said about Barack Obama that he wanted them to be a one-term president. I'm not sure how he feels about uh, that prospect for President Biden. Uh, but I'm assuming that they realize how difficult the forward environment is for most of the American people. And I'm hoping that it's in their political interest to come together and bridge the gap and reach a comp compromise pursuant to what you're talking about in the 90s. I think it's possible. They need a massive infrastructure bill. They need jobs training. They need more relief. You know, they confuse stimulus with relief. The packages that we're talking about right now, Adam, are relief packages. We have the bottom half of the country really struggling. Uh, millions of people in arrears on their rent, millions of people in debt. Uh, you know, Lower and middle income jobs are present jobs. Uh, I'm a fortunate enough person where I can work remotely from home. It's a white collar job. I can talk to you guys over, over Skype. Uh, but a, a present job, which would require me to be a waiter or a bellhop or a parking attendant, uh, you can't do that from home. Uh, and so, so many of those jobs have been lost right now through no fault of those very hardworking people. And that's what the government's supposed to be there for. The government's supposed to be a backstop to help people in their hour of need in an hour of crisis. And so we've had a government that bickers with each other. We have a government that lies about science. We have uh, executive leadership in the country that exacerbated death uh, and lied about what went on in the pandemic. You have 630 people dying per million in the United States versus 20 people dying per million in South Korea. To so just give you the magnitude of the incompetence that's gone on in the country uh, at the senior levels of our government. So I'm hoping that the fever breaks. Uh, the vice president, uh, now president-elect, is a seasoned guy, 47 years in the government. Uh, Mitch McConnell's a seasoned guy. They know what's at stake here for the American people. Uh, we don't want the American economy to break. We don't want the social contract in the country to break, uh, and a result of which they're going to need to do things in a bipartisan way to try to heal the country. You know, Anthony, you, you brought up some interesting points there that this package is relief and what we need is stimulus. And you're also touching upon um, the growing wealth gaps and wealth inequality in this country. And you're saying how you don't want the social contract to break here. Um, you know, President-elect Joe Biden just warned recently about the darkest days are ahead as it relates to the COVID-19 pandemic. And also, as we were alluding to earlier, the need for um, more stimulus in the months ahead. I, I guess for my question for you is maybe from a policy perspective, has anything sort of shifted for you? Have you rethought things like the need for UBI, for example, to kind of tackle these things? Would love to kind of dig into that with you. Well, I wouldn't say rethought. I mean, I think I've been there now for the last year and I've written about this. Uh, you, you have a uneven economy now and you have a plutocracy emerging in the economy. And Federal Reserve monetary policy is phenomenal for assets. So if you own assets and you have a 25% increase in money in the monetary supply of the United States, well, guess what happens? Those asset prices go up. Uh, and so if you own the assets, you have a wealth effect. You feel way better than you did at the beginning of 2020. But the bottom half to two-thirds of the society doesn't feel any of that. 
And with 25 million plus people unemployed, you're not going to see any wage growth. And so what effectively happens is you have a rising cost of living, little to no wage growth. Stagnant wages mean that the actual purchasing power that people have goes down. Um, and so we're we're in a crisis. You know, 74 million people voted for Donald Trump for a reason. They are angry with the system. They feel disaffected by the system. Ultimately, he was an avatar for their anger. And so when you step back and you look at the policies that are needed right now, forget about left and right, Julia. This is now about right or wrong. And if the United States wants to preserve its capitalistic structure and wants to preserve its democracy, we have to come up with policies that create a platform of equal opportunity for Americans, regardless of their race, color, sexual preference, the location of their birth, the luck of the draw of how they were born. Um, everybody needs a platform that they can stand on to run off of. Uh, we have too many people in the society that are in uneven starts. You know, and for myself, I grew up in a blue collar family, but that was an aspirational America. That's when real living wages made it available to people like my dad that had an hourly worker's wage was in a union. Uh, the middle class was available to him. That is not the case today. And so we have to fix that. And, and one of the ways you could do that is through UBI. You could do that through earned uh, income tax credits. Uh, we need to reform the healthcare system in the country at this point. Uh, the great irony is you could have this luxury VIP healthcare, but it's not going to save you from the person uh, that's got COVID and perhaps doesn't have health insurance. And so we have to straighten that out. We have to fix that system. And so, yeah, I've, I've evolved intellectually and smart people do. When the facts change, I was a supporter of Donald Trump's because I believed that he was going to help blue collar workers. I believed he was going to provide for a post-partisan moment in presidential leadership. When it became very, very clear that he wasn't capable of doing that, I said, okay, I'm sorry, I can't support this sort of nonsense and this sort of behavior anymore. Uh, but we need something, we desperately need something that's transformative and post-partisan for America right now. 